reason I did it is because I looked for me and her. That's the real reason I did it. I would have never did it if it was not for me and her. I say that I'm, I'm like 16 years old again because I'm just discovering Snapchat and selfies and social media. I didn't have much of a social media presence before I got arrested either. So I'm coming into learning about all this kind of stuff. As I mentioned in part one, Gypsy had multiple Facebook accounts. One of them was Snow Gypsy Blanchard. I took a screenshot of the way this account looked on January 24th, 2024. Unfortunately, this account can no longer be found on Facebook. However, thanks to the TikTok account GRB Skeptic, screenshots of posts from this account have surfaced. Let's go back to 2011. Let's examine the Facebook posts Gypsy made regarding her father, Rod. In this screenshot, Gypsy is thankful for her family. She mentions her dad, Rod, Aunt Chris, Christy, her half-brother, Dylan, and half-sister, Mia. Where's your father during this time? Louisiana. Did you ever talk to your father? While you were in Missouri? It's a complicated answer. Did I... you ever speak to him on the phone? I did, but my mother was always present. Did you ever tell him what was going on? No, sir. I called her for her 18th birthday, and Dee Dee said, don't tell her she's 18, you know. She, I'm like, what do you mean don't tell her she's 18? She said, no, she's 18, it's her 18th birthday. Ah, well, she's, she don't know she's 18, she's, you know. I thought it was weird, you know. Uh. In part one, I discussed gypsies running away in the spring of 2011. At the beginning of the summer 2011, Gypsy is making a post to her dad. In prison confessions, Gypsy tells the story of the first time she made an attempt on her mother's life. She says she wanted to run away for a second time, so she packed a bag and hid it under the couch. Dee Dee found the bag and confronted Gypsy. Gypsy recalls seeing a firearm that was left on the table from when Dee Dee was taking practice shots a few days before. According to Gypsy, she picked it up and pulled the trigger multiple times. Some of the shots hit Dee Dee and some of them just grazed her. This is when Gypsy realized that it was a BB gun. So the question is, are these posts related to the BB gun? Is this a completely separate situation unrelated to the BB gun? Without medical records or a police report from this incident, it's difficult to know for certain. However, in this clip from Nick's 2018 jail interview, it seems he may be referencing this incident. Since she had warned me that she's tried it twice before, and um, she's only mentioned one of those times in the media. The other, uh, apparently she almost uh, got close to killing her mother, but however, she couldn't do it. After hearing that clip again, I'm left with more questions. This interview was given before Nick's trial, and he clearly talks about Gypsy making an attempt on her mother's life. Why didn't his attorneys follow up on this? Why didn't they ask Gypsy about this during her testimony? Happy Father's Day, Daddy, to the best dad in the world. I love and miss you so much. Though we live very far apart, the loving bond we share is precious to me. I keep a picture of you on my nightstand and always say a prayer that God keeps you safe when you're offshore. I'm so truly lucky to have such a wonderful daddy like you who loves me and takes care of me. I love you. Hugs, Gypsy. This post is completely contradictory to almost everything we've heard from Gypsy and people who were in her life at this time. In Prison Confessions, there's an interview with a family friend who says she was told Rod was basically a monster and Dee Dee and Gypsy were hiding from him. Weren't they worried she would see this post? Learning to give myself injections. It's harder than you think. Thank God for Jip. She gives me such love and encouragement. This post is about Dee Dee being diagnosed with diabetes. However, the word encouragement being misspelled gives me pause about who actually wrote this. Surely Dee Dee knows how to spell encouragement. As I mentioned before, this account can no longer be found on Facebook. And even if it could, as you can see, there isn't much that is viewable unless you're friends with this account. So I cannot say for certain who was actually posting the status updates. In my opinion, I believe this was done intentionally. But why?
While I was doing research for this documentary, I found this profile while searching for the Snow Gypsy Blanchard account. This account is not included in the article from the Springfield Newsleader about the Facebook search warrants. The majority of the people who are friends with this account are from Louisiana, mainly from cities Gypsy and Dee Dee lived in. As you can see, there isn't much on this account, or that is set to public. I'm not sure why this account was even created. It seems unnecessary. I'm also very confident this was created by Gypsy or Dee Dee, but more than likely, Gypsy. In 2014, there's no reason for someone to spoof her Facebook account like has been done since her release from prison. Why create not only a second joint account, but a third? Remember, Dee Dee and Gypsy also have the joint Facebook account, D. Jip Blanchard. Both the Snow Gypsy account and the Snow Bunnies account friends list seems to be people from Louisiana. While the D. Jip Blanchard account friends list seems to be mostly people from Missouri. Of course, I took into consideration that this is not a complete friends list on all three of these accounts. Facebook gives users the option to set their friends list to private, so these profiles would not be visible under friends. While the DJIP account has been turned into a memorial page, there are some things that are still visible. However, I cannot determine the exact date of the account's creation. It appears that the DJIP Blanchard and Snow Gypsy Blanchard accounts go back to at least 2011, while the Snow Bunnies account appears to have been created in 2014. Aside from the names being different, both accounts have the same background and profile pictures. Look carefully at the spelling of the last name Blanchard. That is the correct way to spell it. Now look closely at the DJIP account. This time, an E has been added. Is it possible that the reason the Snow Gypsy account was created was to keep people the pair knew in Louisiana separated from the people in Missouri? People that knew Dee Dee and Gypsy when they lived in Missouri were under the impression that Gypsy's father, Rod, not only wasn't in the picture, but that the mother and daughter were hiding from him. Otherwise, why would Gypsy feel comfortable posting not one, but two posts dedicated to her father? She even tagged her sister Mia in one of the posts. Dee Dee also dedicated a post to her sister. It appears, however, that the pair wasn't always careful about their posts. Take this post for example. Niece. This screenshot from the Twitter account D and Jip Blanchard has the Twitter handle SnowGypsy1 and corresponds to this post made on Facebook. Let's look at the now infamous Facebook post. The first screenshot is from approximately four years ago and has 166 comments. The second screenshot is from March 1st, 2024. I took this screenshot on the day I recorded this audio so the number would be as accurate as possible. Obviously, several comments have been deleted. This is a screenshot from MJ Pack's Thought Catalog, which chronicled the events as they unfolded in real time. As you can see, none of the initial comments are from family members with the last name Petrie or Blanchard. Initially, I considered that it could be possible but that the family may have deleted their comments. However, this screenshot leads me to believe they didn't, as the timestamps of comments are included. All of this leads me to believe that the Snow Gypsy account was created with the intention of keeping friends and family from Louisiana separate from friends in Missouri. I honestly have no idea the intention behind creating the Snow Bunnies account. You decided to kill your mother, is that correct? Yes. When was that? Thoughts of it started a year prior to the murder actually happening. I wish he would have been more responsible. He was the first person I ever told that I could walk. And yet I asked him a question. 
I asked him to kill my mother, but I didn't hold a gun to his head and make him do it. He seemed more happy to do it than anything. And that's why I can't stand him, is because he knew, I think he knew that he could easily get me out of that situation by calling the police. Gypsy has said this many times over the years. However, Nick did tell people what the couple was planning to do, as shown in these Facebook messages the state used in his trial. Oh, you got that one, but I sent another one after that, sis. I forwarded it to you again. Okay, about killing her mom. Yes, she said she wants to see how our original plan goes first, with me meeting her mom and such, and I guess she said wanted to only do it as a last resort, sis. So I guess I'll be meeting her and her mom still first before that idea was to ever happen. Okay. Yeah, sis, I have to ask you something. How crazy do you think Gypsy is? You won't hurt my feelings or anything. I really want to know though, since I just obviously can tell she is. I just can't seem to put in words how crazy I think she is. Well, I don't know how to put it into words either, but I will be honest, I would not ever kill my mom or anyone else unless they tried to kill me first. Yeah, I know. I suppose situations can change people though, to where others are willing to do things that other people aren't. And obviously my mom even though she has been hard on me, overall she has been a very good mother to me. So I could not never do it to her. And the only reason I understand it with her mom is because how unreasonably poor her mom treats her. But since it is a last resort thing, who knows, maybe it won't even have to happen. Well, I suppose. Then, there was this person who posted what she was allegedly told by Nick. Yes, I dated him online from 2010 off and on until last July, and he was trying to get Gypsy and I to have a relationship that included all three of us. I wasn't aware that any of this had actually transpired as I don't usually check on him, but once I seen a picture of him on Google stating that he's being convicted of murder the other day, I started feeling kind of awkward as he'd mentioned them plotting this last year when we'd been dating. And he was also what they call a switch, dominant slash submissive. But he has a side of him he refers to as Victor who's very possessive. And from what I've seen in messages, very aggressive. He was also into the whole BDSM creepy stuff. And he was talking about carving symbols into my flesh and it creeped me out. Also, he messaged me two months ago saying Gypsy and him were split and that since their breakup he'd turned to his darker self and there was no turning back and said if we ever tried getting back together or I ever went to Wisconsin and he seen me that he'd kill me. I have the best kiddo in the world. I was frightened for my medical test yesterday. She made me encouragement signs, a beautiful note, and even made me the most beautiful necklace with her beads that said I love you my honey. Her support means so much to me. God truly knew what he was doing when he put us together. I love her so much. She is the most kind-hearted person I have ever met. She reminds me of my mama. And like we always say, we are like a pair of shoes, one's no good without the other. The first time I ran away from home, I had met a friend. We both went to this sci-fi fantasy convention called Vision Con. I had told him vaguely about what was going on at home. He told me, you know, um, you just pack your stuff and um, you can come live with me in Arkansas. And he said, okay. I snuck out, got a ride from a stranger and went over to his place. And then within like four hours, my mom found me at his place because we had mutual friends in common. He was the first person I ever told that I could walk. In this clip from Mommy Dead and Dearest, Gypsy is referring to the person we now know as Dan. In part one, I discussed this incident in detail and showed messages from someone who was at the house when Gypsy arrived. Nick was not the first person Gypsy told she could walk. Dan was. Not only that, but there were at least three people who saw her walk. The wife who messaged MJ Pack, her husband who gave Gypsy a ride, and the person at Dan's friend's house. I think he knew that he could easily get me out of that situation by calling the police. Why not just tell somebody rather than kill your mother? Why was that not an option? I truly didn't believe that nobody would believe me if I told anyone. My mother had legal documents in place saying that I was incompetent 
and I thought that meant that if I went to anyone, the police, or told anyone, she would just have them convinced that I was making the, everything up. How could Nick have known it was as easy as calling the police? You didn't think anyone, including the police, would believe you, and you were the victim in this scenario. What about the people at Dan's friend's house? What about Dan? They all knew you could walk. I've always wondered why Gypsy told Dr. Phil that Nick was the first person she told she could walk after she told the running away story in Mommy Dead and Dearest. She's also told that same story in all the subsequent documentaries. Dr. Phil is the only time she's ever said that. Perhaps this timeline of events will shed some light on Gypsy's potential motive. From the moment the news broke on this case, people were captivated by it. The more details that emerged, the more people were enthralled. As far as a true crime story goes, this one has everything. Initially, it's reported that a brutal murder has taken place at a home where a single mother and her sick, disabled daughter live, and the daughter is missing. Then comes the plot twist. The daughter is located states away, and not only is she not disabled, she helped plan and carry out her mother's murder. The media covers what the public wants, and the public couldn't get enough of this story. Any savvy attorney recognizes the role the media plays in the court of public opinion, even if it is a double-edged sword. Gypsy's attorney, Mike Stanfield, welcomed the media. Nick's attorneys did not. Nick's attorneys filed objections to the media being present during any proceedings almost immediately starting with Nick's first appearance. On July 9, 2015, his attorneys filed an objection to recording devices in the courtroom ahead of Nick's July 13, 2015 arraignment. Mike Stanfield's first important motion was to sever the trials. As the saying goes, it is better to be the right hand of the devil than in his path. And what was your mom doing that caused you to be more desperate? Things were getting physically and more physically abusive. The hitting was more. The starving was more. One thing that Gypsy has said repeatedly is that the situation between she and her mother was growing increasingly desperate. But just what exactly was the situation in 2014? While it's impossible to know precisely what was happening, there are posts that were made that give insight. Goodbye, Steve, Mama's kidney. Mama is just out of surgery. The doctor said she needs rest. The kidney stones was very big and her left kidney was enlarged, so they had to blast them. She's very tired, but we are snuggling in bed watching movies. Please send prayers she heals soon. Thanks y'all. Love y'all. Jip. Snuggling with my best friend, honey. I love her so much. And we are watching a Harry Potter marathon. She's sleeping a lot, but slowly feeling better. Thank you, Jesus. And thank y'all for all the sweet thoughts and prayers. Jip. Mama's fever finally broke. I crushed her up some ice. And I'm giving her lots of love. She still needs to take it easy, but she is feeling a bit better. Jip. I love you my wonderful sweetheart, best friend honey. You're the best mama ever. During October 2014, Gypsy and her friend and neighbor Aaliyah Woodmancy had a falling out. Aaliyah Woodmancy, who had been friends with Gypsy in the past, I made contact with Aaliyah and told of the reason for contacting her, and she agreed to speak with me. Aaliyah said she had told Deputy Hughes about a male, Nicholas Godajan, who Gypsy talked about a lot. Aaliyah had been communicating with Gypsy via Facebook in October of 2014 about Nicholas. In the Facebook messages, Gypsy talks about wanting to have a baby with Nicholas, and she wanted to name the baby Nicholas Paul Godajan Jr. 
According to Olia, the messages Gypsy sent her indicated Nicholas had promised her they would get married. Nicholas had been promising to meet her at the premiere of the movie, Cinderella in March 2015. Gypsy had gotten upset with Aaliyah and blocked her from Facebook. Aaliyah was unable to remember what Gypsy's name was listed as on Facebook, but believed it to be Gypsy Rose. She had not talked to or visited with Gypsy since October of 2014. Aaliyah agreed to have the conversation she had with Gypsy in October 2014 downloaded from her cell phone. Aaliyah consented, written slash verbal consent, to a download of her cell phone and she was present the whole time to stop the download if she wanted. In this screenshot from MJ Pack's thought catalog, Aaliyah goes into more detail about conversations she had with Gypsy. She's also asking, in my opinion, the important questions. Your article is incredible, very matter of fact. I want people to see that I was incredibly close to Gypsy, and even in October she was telling me she was 18. I don't believe all blame should be put on Dee Dee. I'm not saying this to convict Gypsy, but this is another piece of information people should notice. Also, I believe the incident from 2011 should be brought up. In the messages she referred to him as a pedophile. The youngest she would have been is 18 making the whole incident completely legal. Just two nights ago, I made the connection as to why DD never reported the incident. I originally blew it off, believing that DD is so kind-hearted she couldn't do that, but she literally could not do it even if she wanted to. Also, I'm incredibly curious as to why her family is just now bringing up all these scams and saying how they knew all of these lies. My question is, why did they not report this earlier? Why wait until who knows how much money and freebies were given to them, and then a murder? Why not report it when they supposedly fled? All of this is the reason I need to hear Gypsy's side before I can move on. I wish there was some way I could speak with her. I thought we were so close. This screenshot is from comments under a post in a Facebook group. According to these two people, there was tension between Gypsy and Dee Dee. Yeah, cause Jip could walk. Yep. And Dee Dee wouldn't let go. She told me once that she would only let Jip go when she was dead. I didn't know her as well as all that. So her saying something like that to me blew my mind. Well, Jip is free-ish. I have a feeling Dee Dee wasn't happy about the boyfriend. No, because they're in love. And that meant that Jip was going to leave. And Jip is all she had left. Exactly. Still doesn't excuse murder. Publicly, Gypsy dedicated a post to her mother while secretly planning her murder. I am writing this post for my amazing mama. Since before I was born she loved me and I loved her. Her love is like a bright ray of sunshine that beams on me giving me happiness and love. Through many hardships we have overcome we came out of it with smiles on our faces simply because we have each other. My mama is such an amazing woman because she is many wonderful things. She's kind, selfless, giving, positive, great role model, loving. She's the kind of person that is an angel. And now and again, I come across a feather on her. She's most amazing because of the pure true love she gives me. I am truly a blessed girl. People ask me, how is it after going through Hurricane Katrina? How is it y'all can still remain so happy? The answer is because we are together. Our bond is so special and it's never fading, never ending, unconditional true love. I love you so much my darling honey. And I want you to know you mean everything to me. In January 2015, Dee Dee and Gypsy went to Florida. They went to Universal Studios in Disney World. Gypsy talks about it in this clip from her interrogation video. In, um, this past January, I got a chance to meet uh, some of the cats. Because my mom and I went on vacation to Universal Studios. 
Okay, so the Harry Potter land or Yes, and it was the Harry Potter Expo. So I got to meet um, the girl that plays Luna. Uh, I got to meet the twins, the Weasley twins. Really? Dumbledore and Hagrid. We met the mother-daughter in January 2015 while waiting for a bus at our hotel in Disney World. I was in the handicap lane with my mom when they rolled up. They told my mom all about the make-a-wish trip they were on to meet the cast of Harry Potter at Universal Studios. They spoke of losing their house due to Katrina and their new pink house because that was Gypsy's favorite color. They were off to celebrate Gypsy's birthday in the park. It was early in the morning, and I cannot remember what age she said she was turning. Gypsy was all dressed up in a Minnie Mouse dress, and the mom told me about the collection of princess dresses she owned. This was all in about a half hour that we learned all this information. They seemed so sweet, but if it turns out Gypsy was involved. Looks can definitely be deceiving. The trip was paid for by the Make-A-Wish Foundation. While waiting for the detectives to arrive from Springfield, Gypsy speaks to a police officer in the Greene County Sheriff's Office who was assigned to watch her. She goes into great detail about all the Harry Potter things. That must have been pretty cool. It was. The twins are very nice. I mean, they're all very nice, but the twins actually fit their personality on the movie. Oh, really? Basically the same people? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. How was the amusement park as itself? It looks it always very looks cool. fun. Is it? Very fun. Um, there are two sections of it. One is at Universal Studios. The other one is at uh, Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. But they're right next to each other. Okay. And they have the Hogwarts Express that connects the two, so you can ride the Hogwarts Express to one and take it back. Okay. Um, and it's a different experience each time you ride it. And um, they have a bunch of roller coasters. Um, the castle ride is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, nice. It's kind of more, it's like a gliding ride. And it okay. swoops you around. Uh -huh. And um, makes you feel like you're really flying. Okay. And um, the other one is, I think it's shut down right now because it's not working properly, but the Gringotts ride. Oh, like you're in the ground yeah. and everything? Yeah, and um, I don't know if you remember in the, what was this, part seven, the seventh movie? When they break into it? When they break into it, and they have to kind of like go that spirally thing, yeah. Um, well, they have a simulated ride like that, oh, where it's wow. kind of like a roller coaster and kind of simulated at the same time. Okay. And that was really good, too. That's cool. I'm sure all there lights and special effects are pretty oh, yeah. pretty exciting yeah and um they also have stage acts um so they have like a steve a singer celestina warback from in the books mm -hmm. and she does kind of like jazzy music okay um then they have the frog choir and they okay. sing and then they have um the tri -wizard, um people that come from Durmstrang and Bo Battens and they do a demonstration that's really cool. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So, and um, there's a lot of merchandise. I can imagine. So much. I can imagine. I bought me a, um, a little plush of Dolby. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. And, um... With the uh, pillowcase on? Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And a lot of people, um, my mom and I bought the exclusive package. And um, that gives you one special night that they shut down the parks to where you and only the people that bought that package are let in. It's okay. closed off to everyone else. So it's like the VIP experience. Mm -hmm. And they have this special um, event where they bring food out and you can go walk around eat free ice cream and it's just the whole thing to yourself. Really? How many people do they give that to? Um, Is it noticeably less crowded? I think it's a hundred packages okay. they sell. And um, they had a lot of people that didn't get the experience that me and my mom did because a lot of people were rushing to get the um, autographs on the um, on the package it says that you get a guaranteed meet and greet. That's actually not true. Okay. You have to go to the park and at 7 o'clock in the morning, 
they hand out passes. Okay. Only one pass to each person to get an autograph. Um, but it's first come first serve. So there's people lining up at like 3 a.m. to get um, a, a pass, and people are climbing over, climbing over each other and fighting for it and things That's like crazy. this. But um, my mom and I just talked to guest, guest relations, mm -hmm. and they were able to. Um, we made friends with actually one of the people that tell the celebrities like where they have to be, um, you know, where they have to go and things like that. Right. So. I guess one of the big important people to be friends with. So it was we got yeah, to have, good person to make friends yeah. with. Yeah. You guys are smart. To, yeah, we got to spend like two hours with them. We get to do a bunch of cool stuff. You get to take a picture by like on the Hogwarts Express and you um by the Great Hall and uh Pottermore was there, the website and they were sorting people. I got sorted into Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. And for years I've been a Gryffindor. I was having a major breakdown over <laughs> there. I'm like, no, I'm a Gryffindor. Every quiz I'm taking is Gryffindor. I cannot be Hufflepuff. So how did they do? She then goes on to tell the officer about going to Disney World. And at Disney World, um, I got to go to um, Magic Kingdom. And uh, I went and danced the waltz with Prince Charming and Cinderella. Really? That was really fun. Um, my mom and I got the Disney dining plan, which is unlimited food. Okay. A human being cannot eat this much food. Too much food? And we went eat at Chef Mickey's. I had way too much sugar. Whenever you go anywhere in Disney, they try to pump you with sugar. Mm -hmm. By the end of the night, it was closing time. I was so filled with sugar that I was dancing up and down Main Street at oh, Magic yeah. Kingdom. And then, um, it's funny because the park was all closed. The castle was there. And, um, I, I go through the castle and I touch the railing and I'm like, there's nobody else here. Right! So they got you all hopped up on sugar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gypsy reveals an interesting detail here. She speaks about running around after having too much sugar. Running? First of all, they were there because of the generosity of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, who grants wishes to children battling critical illnesses. Second of all, I thought Gypsy was forbidden to use her legs in public. The park may have been closed, but there are cameras and park employees and other park guests. Thirdly, she's in a cop shop because police from Missouri want to speak to her. Yet here's Gypsy being cooler than a cucumber in a bowl of hot sauce, chirping away like a tour guide for FloridaVisit.com. During this vacation, Dee Dee is taken by ambulance twice to Celebration Hospital. I go down there probably once every two, three years. Okay. We save up our money and we usually like to stay three weeks in Florida. Wow. Just so we don't rush because there's so much to see. They can't do it all in one day. Right. So we usually do a uh, half park one day, take a day off, half park the next, okay. and go That's like that. Cool. You don't play yourself out. Right. But otherwise, after three days, you're like, oh, I just want to go home. Right. At the end of the trip, I was pretty tired. And then my poor mom comes there. Ooh. I both places, Universal and Disney World, 12 of them. And she has to be taken by ambulance to a Celebration Hospital. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. That was not a very enjoyable vacation. Well, I mean, besides... It's just... just a little hiccup on the road, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks before. Wish mm -hmm. I could swing that. <laughs> Oh, Getting ready to be admitted to hospital. Sweet no na is going to take care of Jip while I'm there. Please keep us both in y'all prayers. This is the first time we don't sleep in the same bed. Thanks. Love y'all. Mama was taken by ambulance to the hospital for kidney stones. She has more E7. 
She is resting now and I'm snuggled by her watching once upon a time, holding my new Duffy bear. I love her so much and it breaks my heart to see all the pain she's in. So please keep her in y'all prayers that God heals her and takes away her pain. Thank y'all. Love, Gyps. Only Dee Dee and Gypsy know the whole truth about the dynamics in the home at the end of 2014 and the beginning of 2015. However, when looking at the posts made to Facebook and listening to Gypsy's own words, a picture starts to emerge. It's clear that Dee Dee's health was not good and that she relied on Gypsy to take care of her. It also appears that there was a shift in the power dynamic between the mother and daughter as well. While on some level Gypsy feared her mother, as this post reveals, she was beginning to take her power back, if only just a little bit. When Gypsy talked to me, she told me that she hated how her mom treated her, and that she was not disabled, only seemed so. They offered to help us, especially with getting into Habitat for Humanity, but we didn't feel we were quite within the guidelines, and so denied the help. Dee Dee mentioned that we could always claim disability to get help. Redacted and I are disabled, but we didn't feel it right to play up on those. Outwardly, to most people around us, Dee Dee and Jip seemed close and happy. But when it was just me, Jip showed a darker and secretive side, yelled at her mom at one point. It was a totally uncomfortable situation, so I pulled away. Later, at a redacted, Gypsy told me that she would do anything to get away from her mom, that she was being smothered and just wanted to live a normal life. She was so sweet, kind of scary when mad though. Anyway, I hope this helps you. According to both Nick and Gypsy, the couple had three plans to ensure that they could be together. They named the plans A, B, and C. Plan A was for Dee Dee to meet Nick and give permission for the couple to be together. Plan B was murdering Dee Dee. Plan C was for Gypsy to get pregnant with Nick's child, which would force Dee Dee to allow Nick to be in Gypsy's life. The only plan you ever had in terms of how to get out of your situation? Besides running away, that is the only plan. Did you have other alternative plans other than killing your mother? Yes. How many, how many plans altogether did you have? Three. Okay. Did you have names for those plans? Yes. What were the names? Plan A, Plan B, and Plan C. And could you tell us about the other two possibilities other than killing your mother? Yes. Plan A, we already had tried that, which was to meet up at the movie theater, act like we never met before, and try and start a relationship from there um, with my mother's permission. And what was the other alternative plan? Um, another one was for me to get pregnant. I believed that since he would be the father, he would have to be in my life. In March 2015, Gypsy and Nick devised a way to make Plan A happen. Plan A was pretty straightforward. Gypsy and Dee Dee would go to the movie theater to watch the movie Cinderella. Nick would also be at the theater and accidentally on purpose run into the mother and daughter. Now earlier you told us you met Nick for the first time in person in March of 2015, is that correct? Yes, sir. And where did you meet him in person? A Springfield movie theater. What movie? Cinderella. How is it you were able to meet with Nick in March of 2015? I paid for his transportation, his lodging, to get there. Why did you pay for it? I didn't think he'd have enough, enough money. And you say you met him at, at the Cinderella movie. Yes. Was your mother present? Yes. Did you, did you and Nick, did you and Nick talk that night? Yes. How, how did that work out? It didn't go well at all. My mother hated him from the moment they met. Did you guys watch this movie together? Yes. According to Gypsy, the plan was a disaster. Not only did Dee not like Nick, she thought he was creepy because he came alone to see a children's movie. 
Now, I would be lying if I didn't say I wondered if Gypsy set this up intentionally to fail. Before I get ahead of myself, let's go back to the movie theater. So there's Dee Dee, Gypsy, and Nick sitting together watching Cinderella. Side note, I didn't know Richard Madden played Prince Charming. To me, he is Rob Stark from Game of Thrones. Anyway, at some point, Gypsy leaves the theater to go to the bathroom. A short while later, Nick follows her. They go into the men's restroom and find a nice, quiet, handicapped stall to work on Plan C in a two birds, one stone kind of thing. Did your relationship change in any way that, that day? Yes. How? We got to see each other in person for the first time. Did it become physical that night? Yes. And you know what I mean by physical, don't you? Yes. What do I mean? We had sexual relations. And where? In the bathroom stall in the men's bathroom. This is a risky move on Gypsy's part. She's well known at that theater. They've hosted charity events to benefit Gypsy. Also, there's the person Gypsy says she feared most in the world sitting in the theater alone because both Nick and Gypsy are gone. When they finished in the bathroom, the pair head to the concession stand. About that time, who should also arrive? None other than Dee Dee and she's not happy. She and Gypsy promptly leave the theater. I don't know if they actually watch the whole movie or not. As many times as Gypsy has told this story, that detail is left out. Nick goes back to the motel and calls Gypsy. He inquires about what Dee Dee thought of him. Gypsy reports that Dee Dee hated him, which is a huge bummer because now the couple is left with plan B, which Nick doesn't want to do or hope the encounter in the bathroom resulted in Plan C being successful. Let's talk about Plan C. Plan C was for Gypsy to become pregnant with Nick's child. The couple believed that a child would force Dee Dee to accept Nick and Gypsy's being in a relationship. Nick has said many times that he and Gypsy have a secret that he will take to the grave. Some people believe that secret has to do with Plan C. Back in 2019, during a phone call, Nick revealed that Gypsy was pregnant in 2015 with his child. According to Nick, Gypsy told him they were having a girl. Nick says that Gypsy told him she had a miscarriage after Dee Dee forced her to have her feeding tube changed. When it came to the pregnancy, which I guess would be plan C, um, at some point the defendant didn't really want to do that plan anymore, correct? He wanted to do it, but his mother wouldn't allow it. And, but, so he basically told you, communicated to you, I can't do plan C. Correct. But a couple weeks before the murder, you kind of still were suggesting to him, hey, could we hold off and try getting pregnant? Do you remember that? Yes. But the defendant never really gave you an answer on that. Do you recall? No, he never gave me an answer on it. He didn't say, sure, let's try that no. so we can keep killing mom as a last resort, nothing like that. I was supposed to get pregnant in a week and a half. Okay, hun. So what are you saying? I just feel sad I'm not. Oh, I see, hun. Part of me is really worried about my tube. What if I could have it taken out while being pregnant? You said you would have it taken out. Could you wait like 10 months for plan B? So you want me to get you pregnant again? I'm getting it changed, hun. Oh, because for a second I thought you wanted me to get you pregnant again. I was just wondering, does Big Bend have a hospital? Besides, I'm late on my period. No, okay. Gotcha. Um, hum. The text exchange between Nick and Gypsy doesn't support Gypsy's version of events. Nick asks Gypsy if she wants him to get her pregnant again. Bobby, Nick's father, also says Gypsy told Nick she was pregnant. Was Gypsy ever pregnant? According to how she now describes what went down in the bathroom stall in 2015, there's no way. In prison confessions, Gypsy says Nick had equipment problems, problems that would make it impossible for him to have gotten her pregnant. The movies is the only time Nick and Gypsy physically occupied the same space at the same time. The next time wouldn't be until June 
2015. Also, I don't think the pregnancy is the secret Nick is referring to. Anyone who's communicated with Nick says it's extremely important to Nick that if he makes a promise, he will keep it, even at his own detriment. In the spring of 2019, a woman began communicating with Nick. It evolved into a romantic relationship. She tried to pry the secret out of Nick. Her attempts were unsuccessful. Honestly, I don't know if Nick will ever reveal the secret. After Plan A was unsuccessful, it appears the couple began researching ways to implement Plan B. Gypsy explains some of the potential methods of killing Dee Dee the couple discussed. Who planned this murder? I did. Did Nick do any of the planning in this murder? He may have had one or two. Do you know what plans he provided? He decided what the weapon would be. Had you discussed alternative methods of killing your mother? Yes. What other alternatives had you considered? Poison, arson, a gun. Why did you not consider poison? It was too hard to find an odorless, tasteless poison. Why didn't you kill your mother? I didn't believe I could do it. Could you explain what you mean by that? I don't like blood. I don't like the sight of blood. Frankly, I'm too squeamish, so I just honestly didn't believe I could do it on my own. Yeah, like I said, I'm different. And actually you didn't see a side of me that the woman I am with now knows about, and it still don't scare her off, it's called true love, Laura. I have that now. You have no idea what I've been through with my husband, and it was a lot worse than what I went through with you, and I'm still here by his side. Oh I see. Well you don't understand how bad it really is for me. I mean you may know a nugget of it, but not the full thing. Sorry I can't share it, it must stay between me and her. This is the same between me and him. If I even think of telling someone my life is on the line, I could be killed any day now. Believe me Laura, you don't know what I'm talking about. Just keep it at that. I can't say any more. I'm not asking you to say any more. I know what you're talking about. Um, well that is something completely different than what I am experiencing and will have to deal with soon. See, you don't know what I am talking about. But if it must stay between me and her, I guess it has to. Completely different. What could be worse than the Chaos Dragon and the rulers of the spirit world and afterlife threatening to kill her whole family for staying with the wrong person? Well you are in a whole different dilemma than me. But once I do what I must, I'll have to disappear from a place on earth, possibly for the rest of my life. And she'll have to come with me and leave all of her past behind her. We were the same way when I joined the coven. I would be surprised if you were in the exact same spot as me. You would be surprised. Well, the one I am with is aware of that stuff too. But I can't say any more, so I'm just shutting up about what me and her must do in the future. I have to do things I hate. Terrible things that I hate just to keep him. Well, and just think if we would have been together, you wouldn't have went down that path. The one I am with is aware of these things. However, I will have to do the unthinkable just to keep me and her safe. And I must say please never come around me. It's that I worry for the sake of him, not you. I would never hurt you, even to this day. But what he sounds like he is putting you through it makes me sad. Even though it does, I can open up about my situation even if I wanted to. In truth, I do, but I can't. As you know me being a Taurus, the most loyal sign in the Zodiac. If I say anything, I would betray myself as much as I would betray her, and I can't do that to her. But I'll let you know I hope you stay safe, even if you have to do things that are BDSM related. Gypsy has stated many times that Nick was very eager to murder Dee Dee. However, these Facebook messages between Nick and his friend Beth show, in my opinion at least, that Nick felt as if there was no other choice. Nick came down to Springfield again in June of 2015, is that correct? Yes, sir. Who paid for that trip? I did. Why did you pay for that trip? Again, I didn't think he had enough money. And. How did you get money to him to come down on that trip? I stole money from my mother and I sent it to him via the mail. Do you have any idea exactly how much money you sent to me? Over a thousand dollars. 
understand, in these two trips to Springfield, how much of his own money was used? I do not know. Are you aware that he spent any of his money on either of these two trips? No, sir. In this report, after seeing the Facebook post, concerned friends had all met over at Dee Dee and Gypsy's home. They told the officer that in April, there was a burglary at the home that had rattled Dee Dee. There isn't an official police report regarding this burglary included in the casebook. I cannot say for certain whether the police were called to the home after the alleged burglary. While the officer is speaking with the friends, another woman approached. Linda Young, the mother of the next door neighbor, walked over to talk to us after we'd been on scene for a while. She stated that her daughter had formerly had a key to the Blanchard house, but had given it back, quote, maybe six months ago. Her daughter has some mental disabilities, but is high functioning and lives alone. Linda stated there was some sort of trouble at the Blanchard residence with, quote, certain people in the neighborhood that her daughter had been implicated in because she had a key, which is what prompted her to return it. Linda did not want to tell me who, quote, certain people were, but implied that they continue to cause issues. At first glance, it appears that Linda may be referring to the burglary. However, I don't think so. Linda said her daughter had returned her key to the home six months prior after her daughter had been implicated in some trouble. The Blanchard's friends report the burglary took place in April. Six months prior to June would be January. Perhaps Linda's daughter had been given the key to look after the cats while Gypsy and Dee Dee were in Florida. These are clearly two separate events. I wonder if Dee Dee noticed the money Gypsy had stolen to send to Nick in March and thought she had been robbed by a stranger and not her own daughter. 